Inner Chaos by Grevin Hades. Chapter 6 Getting Acquainted. By the time Twilight and the others had reached the hospital, Applejack had had enough time to give Grevin the basics about Equestria and its ponies. He had learned about the princesses and their duties, as well as the three main types of ponies. Twilight stood next to Nurse Redheart in the doorway, while Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash, and the others stood behind her, watching the conversation in quiet awe. On the way over, Nurse Redheart had explained how surprised she was to see Grevin out of bed and on his feet, considering his injuries. This had puzzled the ponies for a few moments until Pinkie Pie said something that made it so clear. She had giggled while saying, while saying, Ooh, ooh, maybe he's magical and he can heal super fast. He's like a superhero. Vicky had gone on to make up stories of how this creature was actually an alien here to save her pony's life, and that he had to travel in the shadows because of how he looked, which was why he was covered from top to bottom. But Twilight had tuned her out by that time. She hadn't considered that he could have such strong magical abilities within him that he could heal faster than a normal pony could without the use of a healing spell. If it were the truth, it would be an amazing thing to discover. Not to mention, if he were friendly enough, she could learn all sorts of things about him. She turned her attention back to the two conversing in the heart of the room as they all followed Nurse Redheart in. So, let me get this right. There are Earth ponies, unicorns, and Pegasus ponies, right? And you can all talk, work, and live regular lives, correct? Applejack nodded with a small smile. Yep. And we all have our special talents, which is represented by our cutie marks. She pointed a hoof to hers. See? Mine represents how good I am at tending with, to the apple orchards of sweet apple acres. Kermit slowly crossed his arms as he took this all in. Well, where I'm from, there's nothing like you on this. But you all seem friendly enough. In fact, you seem like the people of my home. He paused as his thoughts took him back to Bastion for a few moments. But he was pulled back from his thoughts when he felt a weight on his shoulders. Blinking his eyes for a few moments, he realized that there was a set of bright blue eyes connected to a face staring at him upside down. Hi, I'm Pinkie Pie. Who are you? Are you an alien? Are you a superhero? <gasps> if you are, what's we'll throw you the best alien superhero party ever? Grevin reacted just as the rest of the main six had expected him to. He let out a yell loud yelp and jerked his body back making him scoop further onto the bed and press his back onto the wall, whilst the pink party pony tumbled off his shoulders in a fit of giggles onto his lap. She shook her mane a bit and laughed, her eyes full of mirth. Hey, that was fun! What's your name? Griffin was a bit at loss, but Applejack came to his rescue as she put a hoof on Pinky's shoulder. Easy there, sugar cube. He's had a rough day already. Remember, he's still recovering. Pinky simply smiled and jumped off the bed, landing back behind Twilight. Okie dokie lokey. Upjack continued to speak as she turned to face the others and extended a hoof, pointing at Grevin, who was still sitting there trying to regain his thoughts. This here's Grevin Hades. He's a man from another realm. He's never met any pony like us before, but he's pretty darn nice. She turned to Grevin and pointed to her friends. Grevin, this here's Twilight Sparkle. She's really good with books and magic and all sorts of stuff like that. She's also the holder of the element of magic. Twilight smiled and gave a small wave. Hello. Applejack continued on, pointing to Pinkie Pie next. You already met Pinkie Pie. She's a party pony for sure and knows how to bake up almost anything. She works at Sugar Cube Corner and helps bake the cakes babysit the cake twins. She, as I bet you guess, is the holder of the elemental laughter. Pinkie Pie grinned and bounced in place for a moment. Hi, I know we already met, but I'm Pinkie Pie, and you're new, so I'm going to throw the biggest, bestest party ever. She beamed while Grevin simply not still a bit uncertain about the pink pony. Next was Rarity. This is Rarity. She runs the carousel with tea. She can whip us up all sorts of fancy designs for clothes and has a real eye for detail. She represents the element of generosity. Rarity trotted forward and smiled brightly before moving closer to take a look, good look at his cloak. Charm, dear. Oh, I say, this cloak is far too dry. I'm willing to bet I can make you a new one. That's simply fabulous. You must come by, come by my shop when you get the chance. Applejack moved on to Rainbow Dash before Gravity could answer the fashionista. 
You've met Rainbow Dash before when we were all in the castle ruins. She's the fanciest, fastest flyer around. She can do so many stunts and takes everything to the extreme. She's also the holder of the ailment of loyalty. Rainbow stepped forward and gave a little head nod with a friendly smile. So, are you ever going to take that hood off? No. Gravity couldn't help but smirk at the frown that went across the rain Rainbow's face. Applejack pointed at the timid yellow Pegasus still hiding behind Twilight. And this here's Fluttershy, but Reckoning already knew a bit about her, seeing as he saved her life and all. She's really good with animals and holds the element of kindness. Don't worry if she isn't all up front with you. She's just a bit timid. Fluttershy stepped forward, but kept her head ducked down behind her hair. Um, I wanted to say thank you for saving She paused and shivered a bit, before suddenly rushing forward and wrapping her arms around Grevin's neck, knocking him firmly against the wall in a bone-crushing hut. Her wings became slightly ruffled, and she, and she nuzzled her head into the crook of his neck, a tear running down her face. Thank you, and thank you so much. If you ever need anything, anything at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Every pony, with the exception of Pinkie Pie, who was giggling up a storm, had to pick up their jaws off the ground. They had only seen their friend be so forward in rare occasions of extreme emotion. They watched as Grevin slowly raised both arms and gently wrapped them around Fluttershy, returning the warm hug with a small smile and squeeze. His voice was soft, calm, and warm as he spoke into her ear. You don't have to thank me, Fluttershy. I am just thankful that you are all right. He released the hug, and after a moment, she pulled back and returned to standing behind Applejack. Her wings were slightly extended, and she was still shaking from her outburst, and while her face was hidden behind her hair once more, there was a clear hint of red to it. Um, I'm sorry about that. Her mother smirked and lightly poked Fluttershy's side in a friendly jab, distracting her from her thoughts while Grevin turned his attention to Applejack once more. Applejack. It seems like all your friends hold some sort of element. What are they? Do you hold one as well? Sure as you I do. I'm the element of honesty. As for what they are, well, Twilight can explain that better than I can. Twilight smiled as she stepped forward, moving next to Applejack. The elements we hold are the elements of harmony. They are the strongest forms of magic in Equestria. They allowed, us, they allowed us to defeat Nightmare Moon, who wanted to take away the sun and leave us in a state of eternal night. They also allowed us to lock away the one known as Discord, who was the god of chaos that ruled before Princess Celestia and Princess Luna. Gervin nodded, slowly taking it all in. So, if I remember correctly, Princess Luna was at one time Nightmare Moon? So when you defeated her, she was released from a curse, am I right? Toilet nodded with a bright smile. Yes, exactly. Ever since that night, the skies have been beautiful. I think the princess really wants to make up for things that... for what she had did, done, but I think things have really turned around ever since she visited Ponyville for Nightmare Night. Grevin couldn't help but pause mid-thought at that particular sentence. Wait, do you mean to say that royalty actually visits the people? Pinky rolled her eyes. Well, duh! They are the best princesses around, and on top of that, Twilight is a student of Princess Celestia herself. Gervin crossed his arms, sitting back, truly surprised. Well, I never thought I would see such a, such a thing. Where I come from, there is little royalty, but the ones who are considered to be that very, very rarely allow themselves to be troubled by those they consider peasants. Your princesses sound like they are quite nice. He paused a moment before asking his next question. Everyone. I know I've already caused quite a ruckus in my very short time in your land, and for that I am sorry. I know that you may have many questions for me, and I do intend to answer, intend to answer them all in time. But at the moment, one thing has been on my mind, and I have to know something. Twilight heard the change in his tone of voice and slowly sat down, a small look of concern beginning to form in her eyes. What is it? How long was I unconscious? Before I came here, I was on a mission of great importance. The lives of thousands could hang in the balance if I were to be late. Well, all of them could be lost. Rainbow Dash looked around and noticed that every pony had begun to look down at his words. Even Pinkie Pie had developed a small frown on her face. 
She narrowed her magenta eyes and sighed, knowing that she was going to have to step up. Well, you see, Gravit, you were hurt really bad, so after Nurse Redheart here patched you up, you were out for a good while. His voice hardened, his tone became very even and calculated. Please, tell me how long. Raybo noticed that he had one of his hands clenched into a fist while the other gripped his leg firmly. She looked down and pawed at the ground with her front hoof. Well, a little over three weeks. Grevin tensed as a surge of realization swept through him. Three weeks' time was far too late. He was pressed for time while it was trekking through the mountains. By now, not only would the Gate of Solace be open, but the cities of Bastion would be overrun by the lost armies. Men, women, even children, none of them would be spared, and he was the only hope they had. Vicky waved her hoof in front of Grevin's face frantically. Yoo-hoo! Grevin, are you there? She turned to her rainbow-colored friend. Dashi, I think you broke him! Whoa! She yelped as a purple aura of magic surrounded her and pulled her back to the doorway of the hospital room. Pinky! Twilight scolded. It's clear he's just had a major shock. Give him a moment. The pink pony nodded and looked down, mumbling a small apology while Twilight turned back only to find Fluttershy, beginning to inch closer to the bed he sat on. Um, Mr. Hades, could you please tell us what's wrong? Um, that is, if you want to, that is. She lightly pawed at the ground in front of her, while trying her best to look at Grevin and not be intimidated by his current posture. Grevin rested his head back, letting it hit the wall with a light thud as his mind raced. Perhaps there was still time. Maybe he wasn't too late. His thoughts were interrupted when Rainbow Dash flew up to him and firmly hit his left shoulder. He blinked his eyes as a small wave of pain flowed through his shoulder. What? He glanced at Rainbow surprised at how strong she could hit, considering how light she was. He reached up and rubbed the pain away as, she, as he tried to push his frustration down. He knew he couldn't allow himself to worry or lose his temper here. He would need to get to a secluded area in order to properly vent. That way he wouldn't scare the locals. He put on his best fake tone he could in his voice as he looked down at the main six. I'm fine. Really, just surprised, that's all. Twilight, Applejack, and Rainbow Dash all locked eyes with one another, a frown forming on their faces. They knew that something wasn't quite right, but the others seemed to accept it at face value. Rarity sat down on the ground beside Greb and placed a hoof on his hand. Don't worry, darling. While you may have been asleep for a bit of a while, it could have been far worse. With the injuries you had, you could have been out cold for much longer and in much worse shape than you are right now. This made Twilight pause and focus on what she had just said. Rarity had inadvertently pointed out something rather strange. Grevin was awake, talking, and even walking around after suffering a nearly fatal injury. No pony could do that, not even Rainbow Dash after a major crash, at least not that quickly. However, she had to admit, if he'd meant to do any harm, he, was sure, he sure had an odd way of going about it. He had saved the fillies from the fire, and he had saved Fluttershy, Fluttershy from the death's grip with his own life. No, he didn't mean harm. She did decide to let the subject drop for the moment and move on to a more important topic. Well, Grevin, I have to ask, have you had any time to think about what you will do once you're out of the hospital? Where will you stay? Grevin shook his head at the Violet Pony's question. No, I haven't really given it much thought. But now that I think about it, I really only see one option. Applejack sat herself next to Twilight, curious to see where the conversation was headed. The rest of the main six did so as well, sitting in various places in the room. What option would that be? Well, I don't think it would be very wise for me to stay in the area. I'm clearly different from everyone, and it's just common nature to fear what is different. I don't want to upset anybody. Pony! You mean any pony, Pinky corrected with a grin. Mm, yes, any pony. So I'll try to get my bearings and find a place in that forest to stay. A gasp filled the room as Fluttershy flapped her wings and moved right in front of Grab. Oh no, you can't do that. There are all kinds of dangerous creatures in the Everfree. Timberwolves, hydras, cockatrices, and Celestia knows what else. 
Her eyes were wide with fear and concern as she looked around. As she, as she allowed herself to land and shook a bit with fear at the thought of those creatures. Garvin felt my smirk, noting how cute she looked despite her concern. I do appreciate the concern, but where else could I go? I'm arms, large, imposing, and overall fairly scary. I don't belong in the regular pockets. I'll stay close to the edge of the forest and make a small campsite. I know how to forage and hunt if need be. I will be fine, I promise. Murdy smiled as she jumped to her hose. Idea, she sang. What if you stay with one of us? We all have homes, and surely we can find a place for you. Though, she frowned and sat back down. The boutique is rather busy right now, and sweetie Belle visiting, I don't have a spare room that I can really let you use. She blushed, feeling a bit sheepish. Pinky looked down as well. With the cakes, the twins, and myself, sure you keep corners packed. No room there either. Ermida shook her head as she hovered in midair. No way, you can't fly, so you wouldn't even be able to reach my home. Sorry. Twilight shook her head. The library does have some room in it, even with Spike and I there, but it's near the center of town. There's no way you'd feel, be comfortable there right now, so I think that's a dud. She sat in, in thought for a moment and smiled, looking over to her meringue friends. But Fluttershy, you have at the, live at the edge of the forest, and Applejack, you have sweet apple acres. Do either of you think that Grevin could stay with you until the pony folk get used to him, and he them? While Twilight was actually very curious about getting to know Grevin and learn about him, she knew that it would be harmful to have him stay in a place he was uncomfortable. Especially considering that they had no idea as to what he can and cannot do. She was also curious about his face. Why was he covering it? In fact, why was he covering his entire body? Was he a horrible looking creature? She had seen an average changeling in its natural form before, and that was pretty scary looking. How much worse could he be? She began to ponder, letting her thoughts run away with her before being drawn back to the conversation, when Fluttershy raised her head to speak. Um, well, I only have one bedroom, but... Shoot, Fluttershy, don't you fret none. There's plenty of room at Sweet Apple Acres for him. We'll set him up in a nice spot in the barn. Upjack interjected. Fluttershy smiled, thankful that she wouldn't have to worry about how her animals would take to him. The orange pony rose to her hooves and trotted over to Grevin, giving a bright smile. Well, how's that sound, partner? Grevin sat silently and thought for a few moments, while the main six sat waiting in anticipation. He crossed his arms and let out a small sigh. Ugh, no, I cannot t take advantage of anyone. Pony, any pony, Pinky interrupted. He paused and looked at her while she giggled and then gave an innocent smile, giving a nod for him to continue. He sighed once more. Any pony by staying, staying at their home and taking up their space without paying for it. It just doesn't sit right with me. Applejack laughed as she patted his arm. Heck, Sugar Kim, you can help us out with the farming as a way of paying for your stay. Big Mac, Granny Smith, Apple Boom, and myself all work our hooves off trying to get everything done. And an extra bit of help would be mighty well. Applejack paused, resting a hoof on his arm, taking note of how little it gave under the weight of her touch. She pulled back quickly before it would seem suspicious, but couldn't help but wonder just how strong he was. If he could carry three fillies out of a burning fire and lift a heavy stone off her friend, just what else could he do? Maybe having him help on the farm would be a wonderful help, and they could finally get Granny that new hip, and even fix up the homestead and barn. She let her gaze fall up his arm to his chest, and her and head, her smile still resting on her lips. Well, how about it? Gravin gave a small nod of approval. That seems fair. I will do my best to earn my keep. Thank you for your kindness. All of you. As soon as the words left his mouth, he felt a small smile creep onto his face. All the mares had given a small cheer and had bright, full smiles on their faces, despite and despite the anguish in his heart and soul, he couldn't help but take comfort in their joy. It was a small but pleasant reprieve from his thoughts. He swung his legs off the bed and rose to his feet, feeling a bit out of place as he did. While they weren't small, he still stood well over the ponies. They had stepped back as he made his way over to his armor and blades, picking them up and tucking them under his arm. 
He turned to Applejack and gave a slight bow. So, when do we leave? He sm she blinked a bit, surprised by his readiness to head out so soon. Um, are you sure you're ready to leave the hospital? You were hurt pretty bad. He nodded and took a moment to roll his free arm, eliciting a pop from the shoulder, and then turned to his torso, quickly making another solid series of pops sound from his back. I, I'm ready. I heal quickly, so don't worry. I'll be fine. Applejack glanced her eyes at Twilight, who had a shocked look on her face. She sent the purple pony a questioning look as if to ask if she thought this one. As if she thought this was okay. Twilight nodded. Turning back to Grevin, Applejack smiled and moved to the door. Well, if you say so, Mr. Hades, follow me and I'll lead you to Sweet Apple Acres. We'll get you all settled and tomorrow morning you can help us start get started with some chores. He nodded, moving a step behind her, making sure to keep his head ducked a bit to avoid his face being seen by Rainbow Dash, who had decided to hover at eye level. That sounds fine to me, Applejack. But please, 